Well, what's going on, my wise guy here, coming at you with the second installment of the Rust tutorial series. This one's going to be super short, as it is a super simple one. Um, we're going to be going through variable declaration in Rust. Um, so, let's get started. So, if you haven't already, navigate to your project directory, uh, wherever that may be within your console. Uh, if you're on Windows, I have started playing with it on Windows, so you should have a Rust... Um, dedicate a Rust uh, console, uh, go ahead and navigate to the correct place uh, for your projects, for your tutorial projects. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, type cargo new and we're going to say, we're going to call this one variables. Alright. And navigate into your project directory. I'll just pull this up over here. Oops. Um, and we'll say touch um, source slash main dot rs. All right, and we're gonna say nano source main dot rs. Okie dokie. So fn main will open up our main function. Very nice. Okay. Uh, go ahead and save this, just like this, and we'll say cargo. Cargo build, all right. Compiles fine. So, uh, just as a quick note, guys. Um, whenever I start a new project in Rust, as it's a fairly new uh, language and the compiler is still being worked on, uh, I generally just do a completely clean build. Make sure there's no weird stuff going on um, with my compiler or whatever else. Uh, but that seems to be fine. So we'll say nano source main dot rs. Okie dokie. Alright, so let's get started. So if you've been reading up on Rust since the last video, you'll see there's a few kinds of variable declarations in Rust. One you might have seen is this. Now, let's go through this one really quickly. So in Rust to declare a variable, we say let the identifier, meaning the name of the variable, equal whatever is on the right hand side. In this case I've said let the variable equal a string. The string is hello. Now there's a few things going on here with this variable declaration. <clears throat> Firstly the thing is that this is auto type deduced. So what that means is that at compile time the compiler will go over your code and say Oh, I know what the type of X is. Now, it will do that by evaluating the right-hand side. The second kind of variable declaration is this. Let Y I32 equal to 56, 54. Now, what this says is what this tells the compiler is basically this. <clears throat> I expect the variable y to be a type of int32. And I can prove that this works by doing two tests. So we'll go ahead and write this out and we'll close it. And we'll say cargo run and it will compile. And we'll say we'll get two warnings, unused variable, unused variable, which means that we haven't used them past their declarations. But nonetheless, it compiled just fine. So let's go back into our program. Now, to prove that this is true, I will say this one is a string now. And I'll turn this one into a number. Now, take your guesses uh, in the comment section below as to what's going to happen. So when I hit cargo run and the compiler runs, what should happen is that the first one will pass just fine. However, the second variable declaration will fail and not compile. So let's go ahead and do that and see what the Rust compiler tells us is wrong. Sure enough, we get an error. Error on line 4, error mismatched type. Expected i32 found at static string. Sorry, and static string. 
What that means is that it's found a reference to a static string. We will go over reference types and we'll go over the uh, string types in another tutorial. But essentially what this means is that on the left hand side here we have told the compiler hey when you evaluate the right hand side it must be an int32. However on the right hand side we've given it a string. This is just simply not allowed. So what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll fix that up. So we'll say nano source main.rs and we'll say 55. Now there's one more thing I want to show you guys which is different to most other programming languages. Let's say we say int my variable is equal to by. Then we say, using our macro function, we say print ln macro my is equal to this. We close this and we say my underscore variable. We close this just like this. And so what should happen is we should get a printout of my variable. So let's go ahead and try that. Sure enough, we get an output which says my variable equals by. Now, what's different in most programming languages to Rust is this. So go ahead and save that, and we're going to see what goes terribly wrong here. <clears throat> we'll say, in fact, sorry, I'll just clear the console for you guys. So we'll say, we'll say cargo run, and we'll compile. And you'll get an error that says, error, reassignment of immutable variable, my underscore variable. <clears throat> Prior assignment occurs here. So the key difference between Rust and most other programming languages is, variable declarations are implicitly const. And to make a variable non-const, we must explicitly tell the compiler that it is a non-const type. I use the term const versus non-const because that is what most people are used to hearing. But really, this is immutable versus a mutable variable. If you're familiar with const correctness in C++, then the terms immutable and mutable will be both interchangeable and fairly familiar to you. So let's go back ahead, let's go ahead and edit our program again. Go on to the next line, and, sorry, not go on to the next line. Go back to our variable, and we have to put in another keyword after let, which is mut. This basically says, let mutatable variable, my variable, equal by. Now when we compile this, and in fact, let me just cancel that quickly, and let me just re-output this again. We'll say print ln my underscore variable is equal to we'll say my underscore variable and we'll write this out okay exit and we'll say cargo run sure enough it compiles and as you can see my variable equals by and then we change it and we say my variable equals hello alright guys thanks for watching um, stick around the next tutorial we're gonna be going through Rust's functions um, and then their function returns and their function return types um, like, comment, and tell me what I can do better in the next videos, um, and yeah, cheers for watching.